Hello and welcome. Today we're going to go into the wine business with Terroir, a winemaking tycoon game. It's a very casual kind of, uh, well, winemaking tycoon game. We're going to we start with a plot of land, with we put some, some uh, vines in there, make some grapes. We will smash the grapes, stick them in a barrel, and hopefully sell them off and make some cash is the plan. But yeah, it's a very casual, kind of laid back kind of thing. It's uh, developed and published by General Interactive. It's in Steam Early Access as of yesterday, May 17th. And uh, I'll get put a link in the description, and you can check it out. But anyways, let's go ahead and uh, start planting some vines. Nookri, oh, you know what? Nookri, Nookri yard. There we go. That sounds exciting. No, what is? I haven't had this one before. What is this? I don't know what this is. Um, okay, so anyways, we have our one plot of, of vines right now. There, actually, there's no vines at the moment. We just have stakes here. We will plant them in February. And uh, what we're going to do is basically try to manage this crop and hope we have good weather throughout the year and uh, get some proper grapes and, and make some money off of it. And we have two choices to make uh, for our wines. We have either Chardonnay or Cabernet. Cabernet is a, a cheaper version. Uh, it's like a red wine, just a cheaper um, wine, basically. Chardonnay is fancy and expensive. We are but poor grape farmers, so we plant the cheap stuff. Now, there we go. It is... Hello, doggy. I haven't seen this one. This is kind of exciting. So, the the, the tiles that are nearby you uh, give you benefits. I don't know how you see what the benefits are. Oh, is this it? Ad adjacent to a forest enjoys 10% increase in its monthly yield. Oh, look at that. That's cool. We have two of them right here. There's also lakes and grassland and, and other things out there. Um, anyways, as you can see, the, the greenery is starting to come in. Now, the way this works is... Now, I'm not a vine expert at all, but I... I Watch the tour tutorial, and I I read some things, <laughs> but uh, basically we have we have greenery on our plants. Uh, what you want to do is early on, if they're playing the game, I also figured this out. So early on, you want to keep this thing sort of trimmed back to raise your ripeness up. Ripeness basically has to do with sweetness, and you don't want it to be too sweet, but you don't want it to be not sweet at all. So you want to keep it kind of between four and seven here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do it again to keep it back to where we have real low foliage. And so the grapes will get nice and ripe, and then hopefully, we're kind of hoping for this summer that we'll have some nice nice rain, and, um, come on, come on, rain. It's only May, we're good. Hopefully we'll get some rain in here, and they'll increase our, our, um, our coverage here, our foliage, which will hold us around this 4 to 7 mark. There we go, that's what we want. Rain will grow our foliage a little bit more. Where is it? Here it comes. Excellent. It is there, we got what we want. So we got this in with with the uh, the covering as it is now optimal foliage. It'll just sit there at five. If it gets too much higher, we can we can trim it a little bit more. Once it hits um, September, October, somewhere in there, we can trim it. We'll crank up the speed here. Just keep an eye on them. Looks like it's going pretty good though. I think actually we might have a pretty good harvest here. Sitting right at five. There we go. Time to harvest. All right. So right was at four. We good. We had a yield of 1.54 tons of grapes. That's actually really good. Now you, with all the different qualities of wine are here. Basically, what we want is right in the middle of everything. Uh, that's kind of your main goal. Is to sort of manage the middle ground there. So we have picked them. Now it's time to crush the grapes. We have the old the piggyage, which is well, I would think of like the medieval style one. I guess I don't know. People still do this today. You just stand in a barrel and, and smash them. And that's the way we do it. Once we get a little bit fancier, we can uh, we upgrade our chateau. We can go to a traditional crusher. Uh, but for now, we're going to just stomp on them. And, uh, yeah, we can upgrade our chateau here. Right now, we're at level 1 for 100,000 grand. 100,000? 100, 100 grand. We can upgrade to level 2 of our house and get a fancier house, which gives us more storage. And yada yada. And uh, we are crushing at the moment. Now it's time to stick it in a barrel. So, with fermenting, what we're going to do is we put it in a barrel and, well, we're fermenting, actually, not, not, not barrel yet, fermenting it first. And uh, we're going to choose how long we want it to ferment. The, the, if, if our sweetness is too high, like for instance, if our ripeness had been too high, we want to bring that down. We can let it ferment a little bit longer, which will lower that sweetness. But uh, we're actually perfect right now. So we're just going to let it ferment for less than a month. And then we're going to go grab the presser. What this does is it will increase our acidity depending on how much pressed juice is in there. So if we put like 10% pressed juice, it'll bump us up to 5 acidity. And uh, I think we'll be perfect. 
So let's let's press it. Now we're gonna throw it into a bottle. Our only bottle we can choose from right now is the common French oak. Later on, we'll get a stainless steel back. But for right now, we get the common French oak, which is fine. It'll increase every month that we do this. This is another way, like, if we if we had a bad crop, this is another way that we could manage things and make it a little bit more reasonable. Uh, but right now, we're fine. So we're just sticking it in a barrel for a day or two and then sell the thing. So we're going to open up here, pull in, go into our, our cellar, and let's bottle this stuff up. We're going to name it uh, nook, Nook's First. We can choose, like, if we want to do a, a cork or a screw cap. You can choose the white wine bottle or the red wine. We're going to do this for the first one. And uh, before we can sell this, though, we got to go talk to the experts. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically let them come taste it, and they're going to tell everyone how good it is. Let's come try my wine. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I got five stars on all of them. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, everyone loves the wine, which is rare, and uh, I think we're doing good. Everywhere, but a good ones are rare, just like this little gem. Excellent, thanks, El Cerrito. So that's actually really good. I should have put a cork on it. Putting a cork on it is more expensive, but it costs more money to sell. But we're gonna sell it. Now we have three distributors: we have Fair Brothers, we have Hogwarts, and we have Manhattan. And we have a thousand barrels of wine that we can choose who we want to uh, give it to here. We're just gonna just distribute it evenly across all three of them. They're gonna give me twenty dollars per bottle of wine. And we can sell it. And our relations are going up because we're giving them good wine. If we give them crappy wine, they don't like it. But if we give them good wine, relations go up. Once they go up to like five, then we start getting benefits from that specific um, distributor. But uh, yeah, so they each have 360 bottles. They will, uh, throughout the year, start selling it. You'll see my money go up here. And now we're in October. We don't have no money to buy anymore. anything right now. This is 50 grand to buy that one. How much are you? Clay is 75 grand. I guess that has to do with how good the soil is. Cause I bought one last, uh, when I was playing my test game, I, yeah, those loams only 20 grand. How much are you? Your loam also? So we maybe we can buy one over here. The thing about this is we're next to the forest. I don't have 75 grand though, so hopefully we can get one of these, before the end of the episode, we can we can get one of these bought. We could buy, man, that's 75 grand. And these are just grassland, empty empty lots that we can put houses on. You can re-roll these and get other tiles. Um, we have this one, you can also get like forest tiles, you can get lake tiles, and that, that will affect your neighboring crops. And, and it, it pro provides more hexagons out here too, so you can get uh, more uh, more space to, to grow. But right now it's December, and we're basically just doing nothing. We're just sitting around waiting, for, watching our stuff sell. You can see we're up to 31 grand now. And we have made 21,000 bucks from our wines. Just in that one year. We spent 14 grand. We bought, uh, we bought 5,000 for the wine. And forest maintenance. Oh, that's a new one. Huh. That's expensive. So now we just do the same thing all over again. And once we get to a good point, we can start upgrading our house, upgrading and get better barrels and, and more production. And uh, hopefully I do want to buy some more land of this, this today. So uh, we'll get one more good harvest in here. And we may have enough to be able to buy us another field. So I can keep that nice and trimmed down. I'm going to trim it down all the way. Be a little bit risky. I wonder if I should keep it at the low foliage spot. You can see our yield right here, which is which was going up. Rain will will increase that foliage. Was good. No, not that much though. Especially not this early. We got to get our, our ripeness up before we can start dealing with that. Come on. Um. Come on, ripeness. You got trim back. I'll trim it back one more time. Since it's raining, it'll probably bump up. Once we start getting into like July and August, we really need that ripeness to crank up. Again, we can modify, we can toy with it a little bit with the fermentation and the barreling um, a bottle, or the, uh, the, and letting it sit in the barrels. And so we can we can mess with it a little bit to make it. It's been a very rainy year. It's all been doing all year is raining. Um, so we, we can toy with the flavors a little bit that way, but if we can get this thing right now, this is terrible. Our yield is all right, but but oh, there we go, there we go. We got something coming in. We're gonna hold on to it. We can harvest it right now. But we're gonna hold on until November. Hopefully, make some money. Hopefully, get some sweetness into it, ripeness. And the the rain is what causes these things come to come in. We're at a good yield though. 1.76 is pretty nice. 
1.98. Really good. Uh, we're at November, though. We're going to have to harvest it. If we hit December, it's gonna, we're going to kill it all. So let's do it. Let's go pick some wine. Now, our city, it's, it's a little low on things. City's a little... Actually, probably perfect for a city, but... All right, time to smash. And we'll see if, with barreling this, we can, we can help it out any. So, we're actually doing all right. Very much of fermentation decreases sweetness by one. We don't want that. So, yeah, less than a month. No, no fermenting. We will do this, though. Um, this will increase our acidity, which we don't want. Um, I'm going to put one into it. Okay. And then we're going to barrel it. Just in time for Christmas. Aging softens the wine's tannins and acidity, giving a smoother and balanced taste. Stone storage methods have a chance to imparting different flavors. So we can put common French oak. Decreases acidity by one, and tannins by two for every month. Oh, we don't want that. I shouldn't have put that other that more. I shouldn't have put that acidity in there. Um, we're just going to sell it now. Hopefully get some money out of it. So, let's bottle it up. This is uh, not the fanciest stuff. It's a little bit on the acidic, <laughs> acidic side. We're going to call it Nook's um, Vinegar. <laughs> Alright, bottle it up. Let's see what everyone thinks of it. Boris, Fern. Oh, we have a new guy. Oh, God, I can't ever grab this bar. I can't grab the bar. I can't grab the bar. Why can't I grab the bar? Okay, we can do it that way. Uh, okay, so our new guy is Caleb, who is a two-star prestige, which means he's just a little bit fancier, a bit snobbier, uh, and more strict on our wines. And we can invite him, but it's not the best wine. Maybe we shouldn't. However, if he gets a... Um, we'll leave El Sorito. We can, we can talk to Caleb next time. What? Really? R that really? <laughs> Apparently it was a good wine. Uh, all right. Mm, give me some of that Nook's vinegar. That sounds delicious. Uh, all right. So um, we have thirteen hundred barrels or uh, bottles. They will take up to seven ninety two. Um, yeah. What's that like? I don't know. I don't know what the dividing by three is. Let's do something like that, and then there you go. All right, good relations there. We're making good money. I can't believe that was good. I thought that was a terrible wine. It's a little on the acidic side. I guess it wasn't too bad. Sweetness is only out of three. It's a very unsweet wine. I'm not sure what this button does. It said it in the tutorial, but I don't remember what it said. I'm guessing later on something will happen with that. Um. All right, so we're about to hit February. I think what we're gonna do. Let me pause the game. Um, we have 34 grand right now. We could buy a plot of land over here for 20 grand. To give us more wine. It's just loam. There's no forest nearby or anything. I mean, there might be. Once we click this, it'll unlock more. And then we have to plant it, which is another five grand. So that's twenty-five. So we'll still have nine left. I think. I think we can do this. Let's try it. Yeah. Let's buy that. Uh, just more vineyards around. Um, once February comes around, we can we can buy our grapes and stick them in there. And we also have the expenses of all these other things we're dealing with. Like the uh, chateau maintenance or whatever it is. Storage expenses, forest, yeah, chateau, chateau maintenance. But I think once February hits, we'll go ahead and put some more in here. We're going to throw in some. I really want to put these in there, but that's 10 grand. We can't afford that. We still, have to be able to, we still have to have money to be able to bottle our wine for the next season. So let's just do that. And now we got two fields to manage. Oh, we sold more. Oh, we're up to 22 grand. Oh, we sold more. Excellent. I don't know, um... I don't remember how to see... Like, your bottles that are out there. In the world. Like, the ones that the store has, you know? I don't know how many they still have. I'm not sure how to see that. Without having bottles on hand, I mean. So, what we're gonna do is, uh... This is a two-year-old vine. It's next to the, the forest, so that helps it out. This one is not, so it's not quite as fancy. Some clay over there. I don't. I guess clay a good wine soil. I don't know. A wine expert. I am not. Let's crank up the speed. Hope we get some some sweetness in here. 
we go up to two. I guess this two is... I'm not sure how this works. Is it, like, both of them? Uh, you go away. Turn those up. Keep the sweetness up. Let's see, if we can get two really productive wines, we can make some good money. A lot of rain in here, which is which is keeping our our growth up. There we go. July, we need a nice sunny day. Nice and sunny. This is cloudy. This is not sunny. I don't want to trim these down anymore. We gotta get that ripeness up. What did we harvest it at last time? Was it at three? Trim that down. Come on, trim it. A nice yield. Come on, I need sweetness. I need, I need sweetness. I could trim you. I'm going to try trimming you back one more. And you. We're in November. We're going to have to... We're going to have to go for it. Alright, we're going for it. Sprightness of two. Ugh. No, we're gonna try it again. We're the the I mean, like the unripest wine you've ever had. It all looks okay though. I mean, it looks about the same as it was last time. I've had some really terrible grapes in here. I've gotten lucky this time. And all of this game has to do with just managing the weather and just hoping the weather cooperates with you. And that's actually not bad. We don't need to lower the sweetness, so we're not gonna we're not gonna really ferment it. City, I think, is fine, so we're gonna just leave it how it is. And barrel it up. Yeah, looks good. We're not going to get really any body into it. Okay, so we're going to... We have 22 barrels right now. So let's bottle this one up. We're going to call this one Nooks... Um, no, put an E in there. Nooks... Uh, cork. Um, mm, that's not okay. <laughs> Nooks wine with cork. <laughs> Throw a cork on that one. There we go. Oh, it costs a lot more money. It costs 13 grand to bottle this. That's a lot of money that we don't really have, but but if it works, we'll sell it. I mean, it'll sell fine, hopefully. Okay, come taste it. I'm, I'm broke. Let's talk to, uh, oh, what's his face? Oh, we have Nancy here now, too. Nancy, Caleb, and uh, El Sorito. What do you think? Oh, they love it. Why, uh, why is it? I'm, I'm really surprised that it's doing okay. Uh, yeah, sell. $43 a barrel? Or a, a, a bottle? We have 2,600 bottles, and you, they all want a lot of it, so we're gonna do... Uh, I don't know. Like, 800. Uh, 900. And 940. Okay. Yeah, sell it. Now. The money will come storming in here, uh, pretty soon. If we get a sell, maybe we can get some Chardonnay planted. It's January right now, nothing is selling. There we go, 42 grand. I can't afford clay. I could buy, I don't want to buy a forest. That's strange. We could buy a lot where we can, we can, I guess, build, our, build more houses, I guess, is what, with how that works. We could buy more of this and then put some Chardonnay on it. Let's try that. So if February comes around, we're going to put some Chardonnay in. I haven't grown Chardonnay yet. This is kind of exciting. Okay, Chardonnay time. Alright, ten grand to plant this thing. It's a hundred bucks a month to deal with it. Yep. Okay, we have lots of money that we just sold a bunch. Okay, so now we got to deal with these. It's the same, I think, I'm assuming I'm going to do this. I've never done this before, so I'm assuming it's going to be sort of the same technique here. Rains come in. Increase foliage. We want to keep the foliage trimmed back. Very far. Uh, even more. Even more. Keep them trimmed back a lot. And uh, until we hit, like, June, and then we'll let it go. we got more rain coming in. Every time it rains, it increases our foliage. 
We also hasn't, haven't been hit with, like, rot or anything yet. We've had a pretty lucky go. Looking pretty good. We need to get some foliage on here now. This is, Chardonnay's looking great. What's this? Vine's infested with fruit flies and yield. Oh, no! No! Fruit flies! This one, I guess. Stupid fruit flies. This one is overexposed to the sun. Oh, bad things are happening. That's my Chardonnay. We need more greenery on it. We didn't get the late rains like we normally do. Here they come. That'll that'll put some foliage on it. Hopefully. Okay, it is it is picking time. Yield is low. Can um I think we're gonna go ahead and well. I don't really want these I want these to stay where they're at. I think we're gonna go ahead and go for it. We could wait one more month and just see what happens. It won't go up any. Because we have we have optimal foliage, which means it shouldn't really go anywhere. This one's looking really good. This one's looking Oh, it went away. It did. That's good. That's what I was hoping for. Cloudy we have are you at optimal foliage? Okay, you know what? Let's, uh... Oh, it came back. I should have harvested. Mmm. I should have harvested earlier. Alright, let's start picking. And Chardonnay is basically the same thing. We have a lot less Chardonnay, but we have you know, one less field. One starter depth of trade. So it's going to be not as good Chardonnay. Now let's smash him. Piggy and Chardonnay, are you the same way? So, yeah, crush those. So we're going to have a little bit of overexposed Chardonnay and fruit fly um, Cabernet. <laughs> a good season. We actually don't need to deal with that. And they're both the same. It's strange that they're both the same. Okay, and the city, I think, is fine on both of these. Mmm, green Chardonnay. Okay, we're looking good, I think. We want that one. Let's see if we can hit 100, hit 100 grand here with selling this. Uh, right up here. Oh, can I go here right now since I have these? I'm curious about this. No. I don't know what that button does. Um, yep, bottle it up. This is my fruit fly. I guess I can put, uh, yeah, we'll put the, we have the money. Put a cork in it. And then we need to bottle up our Chardonnay, which I don't know how to spell Chardonnay, so we're going to call it the Overexposed Chardonnay 2020. That sounds exciting. And yeah, stick a cork in it, give it in the right bottle, bottle it up. All right, we'll have someone, how would you like some uh, fruit fly Cabernet? Pauline? And we just have all these guys, the, the fancy folks, talk to it. Not talk to it. Taste it. They all loved it. And now you. Chardonnay, same thing. We get the fancy people. Hmm, is this overexposed? This is delicious. What do you think? Irina? Oh, my. Those have signs of more in the death of this winemaker. <laughs> all right. Uh, Chardonnay is maybe not our... Maybe that's not our calling. Let's sell this one. $13 a bottle. I mean, it's not terrible. It's, um, I guess. Oops. Uh, I can't add. Okay, sell those. Manhattan sellers, I hope you enjoy your delicious overexposed Chardonnay. This one, however, was very good. $50 a barrel, a uh, bottle. Fourteen forty of them. Math. Um. Oh, oh, I have to sell my other bottles before I can sell these? Oh, that's, that's annoying. Okay, so we're just going to sit on them, I guess. And hope that the other stuff sells. How do we get rid of these fruit, fly fruit flies? It's not really, not pleasant. They're still buzzing around here. That went away. That one. Um, can I sell it now? Still waiting to sell. 
So they won't buy this until they sell the other ones first. I should have done this one first. I didn't realize that's how that worked. Hang on, I gotta trim these. So Chardonnay... Maybe Chardonnay has a different thing. Like, maybe Chardonnay you want to be more ripe, less ripe. There must be some sort of trick to it that I don't... I don't know. Whatever it was, it wasn't good. How about now? No, we're never going to get this stuff. That terrible stuff's never going to sell. We're going to just have those nasty bottles on her. Three month old bottles. I guess it's okay. Aged. It's delicious. I don't know how to get rid of flies. So we'll go... Um, I was going to end the episode here, but we're gonna go, I want to buy... I want to upgrade my chateau. So we'll go one more season. And maybe get some things sold. We're in June. We'll check in July and see if we can um, sell these next ones. Looks like everything's going pretty good. What's this? Fungal rot. Really? Which one? You, you're just a, such a problem. I think what I needed to do was trim you back then. To help with the fungal rot. I think is the way that works. Okay, so it's harvest time. I'm going to slow speed down. Uh, can we sell these? No. I still can't sell them. Because they have they have my trash. They don't want my trash. Um, Alright. Well, it's harvest time again. We can wait. Oh no, fungal rot right there. Okay, we'll go... Um, turn you back and you... Fungal rot is everywhere. I was just saying how I haven't been hit with fungal rot. Oh, now I have. Stop raining. I'm gonna go ahead and sell it. Oh, it came back. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and sell it. Well, harvest it, I should say. I wish we could sell it. Uh, it looks, you know... I mean, this is a little bit fungal. There's only f half a ton. We really didn't grow anything this season. Alright, whoops. Sell? Nope. <laughs> um, this is a problem. Nobody wants to buy my nasty wine. Okay, piggy edge it up. I wonder what we can do. How can we make them sell? I guess we just... Maybe we should just trash the bad wines. No one wants to buy that junk, so we'll just sit there for years. Like, no, we don't want to buy from you. Your stuff is disgusting. Maybe the Chardonnay, we should let it sit for a while. This looks similar to the other one. Um, okay, we'll leave that. This, we probably... Maybe we'll try something like... I don't know. Like that. Okay, so for the, the, the Cabernet, we know how to grow the... We know how to do the Cabernet. Chardonnay, we don't know. So let's... Um, Let's throw it in a barrel, and we'll let it sit for a while. So, like the um, the Chardonnay, it's sitting in a bottle. We only have five barrels of this stuff. Let's bottle up this one. Stick a cork on it. Cost a thousand bucks. Okay, bottle that one. This one we're just gonna let it sit for a while. Fruit fly cab. Still waiting to sell. So, uh, it's gonna be just sitting for a while. We can go ahead and get a tasting of this one. Alright, what do you think of this one? I've got to re-up re my reputation here. There we go. This one's 11 months old. I have a thousand bottles there. I only had 360 bottles here. Okay. Let time pass, and hopefully we can get some things sold, eventually. we got to sell off that. Did we sell any of it? Lifetime is 133. Last year we made 3,500 bucks. We spent 18,000. No, that's a problem. Now we're never going to sell these things. <laughs> Alright. Well, I was wanting to show off the like a fancier chateau and get into this. 
Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do a second episode and we'll do that. But uh, we're going to call it a day here. So thanks again for watching. Um, I'll keep on playing this. We'll see if we can sell off um, some wine. <laughs> anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.